In this episode, we're going to talk about harvesting and using methane. Yep. Stay tuned. Hello folks, welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host Jerry Hansen. On our homestead, we're adjusting to different sources of energy. One is my solar power, getting energy from the sun. Another one is stockpiling propane to give us uh, gas, heat, uh, what have you, whatever we can run on propane. But in the event of a uh, service interruption and our four-year supply of propane just is not enough looking around to see what alternatives I have are uh, well there's a couple of things one of the options as I talked about in the previous video is installing a wood stove and that's my goals for this year is to acquire a wood stove wood splitter uh, wood chipper and shredder and a couple of chainsaws and uh well <laughs> and a means to haul it <laughs> down to the woodshed and i also have to build the woodshed so that will keep us warm and we can cook on the wood stove so that would be okay maybe heat hot water but that is primitive living so without the propane uh it'd be really primitive but there is another way you could harvest a limited amount of methane gas and run it through your gas lines uh, to burn for your water heater uh, is propane and your stove your cook stove uh, it wouldn't suit so much with burning as far as heat goes that's where the wood stove would come in but primarily the cook stove and the uh, water heater so my my idea was harvesting uh, methane right here is my septic tank uh, this is the uh, high water alarm switch we have a sand filter system is what we have it's not a drip gravity system where the stuff flows in and the water flows out the liquid part flows out and just trickles into the ground this actually pumps up to a mound which is a sand filter system and then drains out into a drain field uh, percolating down into the soil so our um, the big community down in the valley uh, they their sewage treatment facility they actually installed a methane collection system and they have a power generation plant hooked up to that so they're taking and recycling the methane from the process of uh, decomposition and creating electricity pumping it back into the grid as far as that goes with um with a method i was thinking of is taking and tapping a hole or even building a new lid for my uh, septic tank and uh, because I built the lid for the septic tank when we moved in or when I bought the property uh, the lids were in bad shape so I had to form new lids and I made new lids so I can make a new lid if I have to and then uh, tap into it and put some kind of a hose device off of it and let the methane come up and filter into a some kind of a bladder say a truck sized inner tube and once the inner tube fills up with gas, then all you'd have to do is hook the gas to a line that runs into the house and put a weight onto that inner tube to create pressure to force that gas out through the pipes and run your, uh, your cook stove and your water heater. So that is a method I've been thinking of for quite a while because I see the, uh, the commercial use of it and they've implemented that and also you see YouTube videos where 
I ran across one several years ago that a pig farm in the Philippines is harvesting their methane and running their cook stoves off of it. So that's that's another feature that you could add to your off-grid homestead because if you're not running a composting toilet and just adding sawdust and microbes to your toilet to break everything down, if you're running a septic t system, just tap into your septic tank and draw the methane off of that and then somehow store it and then run it through your uh, system. But be careful when you're working with gas. You can have an explosion. And at my age, I explode frequently. Uh, I want to emphasize, uh, as far as disclaimers go on my show, my show is a vlog. Okay, it's a video log. It's just demonstrating to you guys, my audience, how I am doing things. It may not be the right way. It may not be the ethical way. Uh, but it's a way that works for me. If you want to copy what I'm doing, go ahead. I don't care, but my methods that I'm using here, I'm not necessarily teaching you how to do it. I'm just simply sharing with you how I'm doing it. It's not an instructional, uh, except for sharing my recipes with you on cooking and a few other minor things. But so as far as the methane use goes and uh, maybe a future, maybe a future project for the homestead, uh, the resources are there. We could tap into it. So I just thought I'd share that with you guys. I'm Jerry Hansen, your host. This is Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I want to thank you guys for sharing my vlogs with me and coming in and watching my adventures and seeing how I'm uh demonstrating how i'm doing things yep uh by no means this is these are instructional videos you just uh, uh take them for what they are uh just sharing uh me sharing you with you guys uh, what i'm doing and how i'm doing it yep some of it's the right way some of it may be a little the wrong way if you guys determine it might be wrong don't do it for crying out loud yeah Feel free to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, click that bell icon that alerts you to new videos as I upload them. And also clicking that share button, sharing my videos on your social media platforms helps out the channel a lot. Check out down below, I have some products I'm selling. And if you'd like, please buy one and help us out financially to achieve those goals of installing the wood stove and purchasing those other things that we need to get done this year. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, got my stuff cleaned up. Got the septic all fixed. Managed to fix the break with that coupling. I'm gonna go ahead and keep that valve there for now. Uh, replace it at a later time. It's not eminently necessary to replace that valve right now. But I got her wired. Got the new float tr float switches on the float tree. Some pumps in place. The wire is fed up through that conduit, and it comes up through here. And here's the high water pump alarm. This is the uh, switch float for the high water alarm. Connects right there. And this is the wiring for the motor. 
the wiring for the motor switch. And here's the four lines I talked about, a common ground, a common neutral, a uh, hot wire for the high water alarm, and hot wire for the, uh, the pump. So I got my wire nuts back at the house. I'll have to run back to the ranch and grab those and uh, bring those down and get this all fastened up and close the box and we're done. And I just have to dig a hole for this 4x4 four four post. Made it a little fancy at the top. Couldn't help myself. I'm an artist. What the hey. Anyway, that way it won't stand out like a turd in a punch bowl out here in the middle of the floor because this is going to be filled with, uh, back filled with soil. There'll be uh, nine inches of soil well, actually, there'll be about four inches of soil laying over the top of this. I'll be pouring a new stick for the lid. This one's pretty decrepitated. Let me put this back on before somebody falls in. All right. This one's set up to pour. I just got to get a rebar handle for it. What I did was, oh, well, we got water in there. That's all right, but I cut a board and beveled it and uh, sheet of plywood and set it down in there to fit tightly. Covered it with uh, plastic. I'm going to pour, I'll clear the critters out. Oh, a little snail. Mr. Snail and Mr. Worm, you guys don't need to be in there. Go make your worm casting somewhere. Go on. Off with you. And you. Go play on the grass. There you go. All right. Just get a bag of cement and my rebar handle. Pour that in there. Let it dry. Uh, let it set about a week, and then pull it out and uh, remove the plastic and the plywood, and then move them over to the, the other unit and use the same material to put in the other one and pour my cement over there. Now, this is the sewer side. This is important about getting it keeping it covered. But the septic had been pumped when I bought the uh, farm. The septic's pumped clean. There's no sludge in the bottom. Uh, I don't know what the deal is, uh, why it was pumped clean. But it's to my advantage. I don't have to worry about pumping a septic tank for a couple of years. And I noticed the well has a brand new well head on it, a well pump. And then, oh, anyway, I'm going to backfill this with uh, dirt and try to level it off with a slight slope, gentle slope going down to the creek. I'll be putting some uh, brush, shrubbery, fruit trees, the stuff around here. This will all be buried under four inches of uh, soil. And I measured this height. It has to be no less than 12 feet above the ground, 12 inches above the ground. And so I'll have it about 13, 14 inches above the ground by the time I get my soil in. And the conduit here is shallow here, but when I get the when I get the uh, soil backed in, it'll be two feet deep. That conduit will be two feet deep all the way uh, up. It's deeper in some spots. I dug the hole deeper in some spots, but or the trench, and then, but there where it accesses the, the septic, I had no choice but to shallow it up there. But anyway, I'm going to backfill it. I'll order some dirt, get that all covered, plant a lawn, bring the home in, house is going to go right there, we'll bring, I'm um, changing uh, the transmission, or actually I'm pulling the transmission into the truck uh, today, I'm going to go over Jeremy's home, so I'm going to go over and have, pull the transmission and rebuild it. Gonna teach him how to pull a transmission and teach him how to rebuild a transmission. So there you go.